The alarm just sounded. Astronomers have minutes to confirm a massive new arrival. It's a huge, inbound object, tracing a path near the infamous 3 I atlas. Early estimates claim it could be 100 times larger. But is it real? We'll track the raw data, separate the signal from the noise, and model its trajectory. Get ready for a deep dive into real-time cosmic discovery. The universe just sent us a giant. If you stay for the next 10 minutes, you will see how astronomers detect, verify, and model new objects from the first alert to orbital solution. We'll start with the alert that came in one minute ago about a massive incoming body linked to 3I Atlas. Then we'll separate what's confirmed, the measurements, brightness, and trajectory, from what's speculation, including why some early estimates claim it could be 100 times larger than the known comet. How astronomers confirm a sudden object. Alert. The alert tone sounds in the control room. A short digital pulse that tells astronomers somewhere in the sky. A moving light has been caught crossing the camera's field. The coordinates line up near the path of 3I Atlas, a known interstellar object first identified years ago. Within seconds, the alert data packet moves across internal networks to researchers and automated systems that run all sky surveys. These surveys capture wide views of the night sky every few minutes, looking for any streaks or motion that repeat across frames. When the software finds a faint line of light that changes position predictably, it flags a possible moving object and assigns an internal event ID. Each new detection begins with triage. The system checks timestamps, brightness stability, and camera angle to rule out problems like a passing plane or satellite glint. If everything passes, the event data is routed to professional astronomers through the Minor Planet Center's early alert feed. This happens automatically and sometimes in the middle of the night. Because observing conditions vary, confirmation depends on how fast different observatories can get their own telescopes pointed at the reported coordinates. For a bright, fast mover, the window may last only minutes before the object slides beyond view. Early photometric calculations, measurements based on how the light intensity changes, suggest the object's reflected surface area might be a hundred times greater than 3I Atlas. That estimate sets off both interest and skepticism. Astronomers know brightness alone can mislead when there's little information about surface texture or reflectivity, known as albedo. A perfectly reflective sphere and a dark, carbon-rich rock can appear very different even if both are the same size. So, the alert notes that the size is uncertain and requires additional observations. As Earth rotates, telescopes in other longitudes pick up the candidate within hours. Teams coordinate through online networks to share raw image frames. By comparing where the object appears from two different sites, observers create parallax measurements, small shifts in apparent position caused by seeing from different locations. This method helps establish distance and verifies that the light source is indeed out in space, not a near-Earth satellite or internal camera reflection. Once the detection looks genuine, spectroscopy becomes the next step. A spectrograph splits incoming light into its component wavelengths, creating a fingerprint that can reveal whether the object reflects sunlight, off rock, ice, or metal-rich dust. If a spectrum shows clean solar reflection without emission lines from gases, that points away from an active comet and towards something more inert like an asteroid. So far, the object near 3I Atlas shows a flat brightness curve with unexpected variations, suggesting surface irregularities or rotational modulation rather than a comet tail. Astronomers are cautious, remembering past mistakes. In 2019, several all-sky cameras flagged what looked like a massive inbound body near Orion. 
it turned out to be the glint of a tumbling rocket stage caught in twilight. Another false alarm came from image stacking errors that created ghost streaks resembling a moving target. These experiences shaped better filters inside survey pipelines to separate noise from authentic movement. Each new detection must pass through these automated filters before reaching human analysts who review candidate lists manually. When the analysts look at the data for the new object, they notice an unusual reflection pattern that doesn't match typical cometary signatures or asteroid phase angles. The reflected light appears polarized in a way that hints at a rough or possibly metallic surface, though that remains only a working hypothesis until more spectra arrive. Multiple observatories confirm they see the same target moving consistently across background stars. The detection is real, but classification remains pending. With confirmation secure, the focus shifts to figuring out how it moves. To know what the object is, scientists must reconstruct its orbital path, mapping velocity, angle, and distance from the Sun. That next stage reveals whether it's simply crossing 3 I Atlas region or traveling on an intersecting trajectory that hints at shared origin, modeling an object's path. From data points to cosmic context, to answer whether a new interstellar visitor could really be following the same path as 3 I Atlas, astronomers first turn to the data. Every confirmed observation adds one small dot on a star chart. Right ascension and declination give its position, while timestamps allow velocity to be calculated. Over several nights, these dots connect into a curve and orbital models begin to take shape. Using the initial series of points, computers estimate orbital eccentricity, which tells how stretched the path is, and inclination, which is the tilt relative to the plane of the solar system. Combined with speed relative to the sun, these parameters define how tightly or loosely the object moves under solar gravity. When early plots show a trajectory that does not close into a loop, but flares outward like an open branch. The first thought is a hyperbolic orbit, typical for interstellar visitors that are not bound to the sun. This is what made one, I Oumuamua, and later two, I Borisov, stand out. Yet astronomers remain careful, because a few mismeasured positions can exaggerate that shape. With fewer than a dozen data points, even small errors in timing or telescope calibration can distort computed speed by large margins. That's why most teams classify these initial estimates as provisional. Only after several days of additional tracking does the orbit start to settle into reliable form. Those early results also tend to inflate the object's apparent size. The main reason is photometric modeling the process of converting observed brightness into a physical diameter. The brightness you record through a telescope depends not just on how big an object is, but also on its reflectivity, or albedo. A shiny surface bounces more sunlight, while a dark one absorbs it. Without knowing the albedo, scientists have to guess, which can swing size estimates by factors of 10 or more. This uncertainty is what feeds the hundred times bigger claims that often circulate in the first hours after detection. To narrow those ranges, researchers look for additional wavelengths of light. If the target emits faint heat that can be measured with infrared instruments, that thermal radiation sets an approximate size independent of reflectivity. Radar can also help for closer objects, bouncing signals off the surface to map shape and rotation. But for distant and fast-moving bodies, these data are rarely available, leaving brightness models as the main tool. There's a useful comparison from 2019, when 2 i borisov was first spotted. Early projections gave it an enormous nucleus, potentially 20 kilometers wide. As more optical and infrared data arrived, 
scientists realized the core was less than one kilometer across. The overestimate came from assuming an albedo similar to dark asteroids, whereas Borisov's surface reflected more sunlight than first thought. This historical example reminds observers today to treat large reported sizes as placeholders until additional data confirm or scale them down. With the 3 I atlas linked object, the working hypothesis suggests it could be a fragment of interstellar debris, possibly a piece from a larger disrupted body. Another hypothesis is a loose binary system, two smaller masses orbiting each other, whose combined brightness mimics a single large object. Either scenario would let it share a similar region of space without implying an intentional targeting motion. In orbital dynamics, crossing trajectories often arise by coincidence as different interstellar paths thread through the solar neighborhood. NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, or CNEOS, compiles all verified positional data to publish updated orbital solutions. Each revision replaces speculative numbers from early observations, refining distance, velocity, and inclination. Within a few days, most uncertainties shrink significantly and exaggerated size or speed claims fade. The refined coordinates now indicate that this new visitor, a vast but distant body, moves through a parallel corridor of space near the 3 I atlas track rather than directly toward it. Each adjustment contributes to a larger understanding of how transient guests travel between stars showing that even a fleeting detection helps trace the exchange of material flowing across our galactic neighborhood. Conclusion Early estimates often overstate what later data refine, yet each confirmed interstellar visitor adds precision to how we model the solar system's edges. Revising those numbers isn't failure. It's how science narrows uncertainty. You can watch that process yourself through NASA's Minor Planet Center Alerts, which publish raw detections and updates in real time. These open archives show the sky as a living data set instead of a mystery behind headlines. Studying these travelers isn't about predicting danger. It's about tracing how dust, ice, and rock link our small solar bubble to the rest of the Milky Way.